Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Miranda Dennis, owner of Oasis Clinical Counseling Services. And I am a licensed clinical social worker in New York and Virginia, and I do a variety of different things. One of my specialties is dialectical behavioral therapy. And I have decided that I was going to go ahead and do the requested video of the eight primary emotions. I've already done one. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, you want to make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so that you know the next time I upload the next emotions. All of us are born, born with the eight primary emotions I gave you in the last video, so you'll have to go back and find it. In the last video, I gave you three main jobs that emotions have. So you want to go to that very first video, and it is titled, The Eight Primary Emotions, Joy. So you want to make sure you go to that video if you haven't watched it already, so you know what the three main jobs of emotions. Today, I wanna to give you a little bit more information about emotions, and then I wanna share about the primary emotion of sorrow. So there are eight, this is sorrow, and so that means I've already done one, this is the second one, so that means that there are how many more left? Let's do a little bit of math. So, <laughs> so there's six more primary emotions, so there will be a total of eight videos that I'm gonna do, so you wanna make sure you get all eight you won't get them if you're not subscribed. So I want to let you know this about emotions. Many times people think emotions are bad and the bad ones are anger and sadness generally and fear. Those three would be the ones that we would consider bad emotions and emotions we want to avoid. Here's the problem. The eight primary emotions are innate. They're born within us. So you cannot ever, 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 ever get rid of them. The goal is to never get rid of emotions. You want to experience every single emotion that you have. So you know what it feels like in your body. You know what the thoughts are that you're thinking and you know how to move through it. Okay. Because you're going to experience these emotions. So let me, let me say this also about emotions. Emotions love themselves. So whatever emotion you are currently experiencing, guess what? You want to experience more. For example, we talked about joy last time. So if you are experiencing joy and, you know, that becomes, you want to, that feels good, right? Endorphins are being released. That feels good. But the emotion we're talking about today is sorrow. That doesn't feel good. So nobody wants to experience more sorrow. But what happens naturally, it's just the way that our brain is made. This lower primitive brain back here down by the, the brain stem, that's where our emotions are housed. That's your lower your lower functioning, your lower thinking, that's where you're breathing, you're blinking, you don't have to think about blinking, blinking, that's not, those are things that are more higher order thinking, right? That's in your prefrontal cortex, just a little brain um, knowledge there. That Those are in your prefrontal cortex, the things that you have to think about. Emotions you don't have to think about, blinking you don't have to think about, you don't have to tell your lungs to take in this, um, air and transform it and use it and send it to the parts of the body that it needs to go in, that's in your lower primitive function. And guess what? That's where your emotions are also housed. So because they're housed there, it's automatic. It just happens. You're going to experience sorrow. It isn't going to feel good. But if you are listening to sad music, watching sad um, movies, uh, say you broke up with an ex, you're going through the phone, you're looking at the text messages, you're looking at the pictures, you're on social media, looking at everyone's every, everyone's wonderful, amazing life that's not always realistic, then you're going to increase your sadness. And then with that sorrow comes other emotions, come secondary emotions like despair. Um, then you might start feeling um, hopeless. Those come from sadness. 
So I wanted to, to give you a couple of things to look out for. Emotions are not facts. They feel like facts. They automatically happen. They're innate within us. We're born with us. They're in our lower primitive brain functioning. You don't have to think about them, but you do have to experience them. You do have to love them. If you remember from video one, emotions have three jobs. Those jobs are so important. Each emotion has those three jobs. Sorrow has a job. Sorrow has a purpose. Sorrow is just as important as joy. What we don't want you to do is doing things that will increase and extend your period of experiencing sorrow. We want you to experience it. So you need to acknowledge it, experience it, learn how it, how the, be aware of the thoughts that you're having. How does it feel within your body? Where do you feel it in your body? And then what you want to do is you want to find ways to get your brain and body connected and you want to find ways to calm down the emotion, not stop, not get rid of, acknowledge, experience, cope, acknowledge, experience, cope. So you can move through the emotion and come out on the other end well. Um, if you recall, my channel is all of the health. Um, I will have some physical health things. That's not my area of expertise. I'm learning in that area, but I try to put out information as well on that, but also spiritual health. And so one of the things that I want to connect, I want to give you a couple of scriptures. Uh, by the way, if you haven't, let me grab this really quick. If you haven't gotten my, my ordered steps, you can grab it on Amazon. You can grab it on my website, oasislcsw.com. Click the author tab and you'll be directed to my 90-day wellness planner. Great way to start at any point in time in the year. It doesn't have to be a New Year's resolution. You, there's no dates, so you can start at any point in time. One of the important things that I do give you in here is a um, assessment. Not sure if you can look at that, but I do give you an assessment where you can check your spiritual, interpersonal, physical, and your emotional wellness. And so it's a, a, a check that you go over every night, or I'm sorry, every, let me check. It's a 90 day wellness planner. So you do day one, day 45, and day 90, you check how well you're functioning in those four areas. The other really cool thing that I give you is in the beginning and the emotion regulation section, I talk to you about what the eight primary emotions are. And then I give you a couple of scriptures for reference, because as if you remember from video one, if we are created in the image of God, then he gave us those emotions and they're OK and we don't want to get rid of them. I do want to give you two scriptures that will help you manage and understand emotions. The first scripture I want to give you is in Psalms, Psalm 42 and 5. It says, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. This means that when you are in a space of sorrow, First of all, it, scripture addresses sorrow. So that ought to give you a clue that we're going to experience it and we don't need to get rid of it. Clue number one. Clue number two, God is with us. We can say within ourselves, like, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm experiencing sorrow and we can praise and we can bring it to God and he will help us in that, sta in that state of mind that we're in. The other important thing that I want to point out to people is a lot of times, especially in the Christian faith, we want to say, just pray about it. You know, just do this. Just, just, just. It's not always a just. Learning about your emotions, loving your emotions, understanding your emotions is a process. And again, these emotions are God given. Here's Isaiah 53 and three. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And that, I'm just going to stop on that part of the scripture. The Lord himself was a, is described as a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. He knows 
what you're going through because he has experienced it for himself. And if he experienced it and he is our direction and our path and our strength and our light, and we know that he got through it, I wanna leave you with this. You're able to experience grief, sorrow, understand it, acknowledge it, find out where it's coming from, put on your your private investigator hat of your own emotions and your, your thoughts, figure out what's going on, accept it, love it, understand it. Then you'll be able to manage it and cope with it, not get rid of it, not judge it as terrible or horrible, but know that it is an automatic emotion, innate emotion that we're all born with. I experience sorrow, I experience grief, just like the next person. And I have to recognize for myself, what's happening? How am I coping? What am I thinking? What am I doing? How can I get my body back into a relaxed muscle state so I'm not sending the message to my lower brain that I'm in danger, that something is wrong because that's what's going to be interpreted. So as long as we stay intensely sad, intensely anger or whatever the emotion is, you're going to send your body into a panic. So the more relaxed that you can get your body, then the better you'll be able to cope and manage all of your emotions. Again, I'm Miranda Dennis, owner of Oasis Clinical Counseling Services, and I am here to talk to you over the next couple of videos on the eight primary emotions. Today we covered sorrow. The first video we covered joy. If you'd like to be notified, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell so you know when the next emotion comes up because our goal is to live life mentally, emotionally, and spiritually well, and I want to help you with those goals. Tune in for the next video. We'll see you then.